Hey, Diane, let me change this, the topic just a little bit on supply chain, right? Because what, what we're seeing with the pandemic and as we come out of the pandemic and what's been really brought to you know, the forefront here is the security around supply chain, specifically just you know, a few, few examples in the, the recent press around semiconductor availability, around aluminum and um, you know, steel availability and prices in the market. You know, the integrated supply chains in the economy, it's not so simple to say we're gonna reshore those things or, or re-optimize those because there are a lot of dependencies. I'd like to get your take from a, you know, a macroeconomic viewpoint of, you know, what does that mean and how do we deal with that? And like, what do you seeing in the, what are you seeing in the research that you're doing? Well, it's really interesting is, you know, one of the largest, I've been on the line with a lot of and off the record meetings with economists from every major industry in the United States and 25 countries around the world, as well as policymakers in the last couple of weeks. The number one concern across the board was the relationship between Taiwan and China, because Taiwan produces about 90% of those chips that go into manufacturing that have already disrupted production, most notably in the vehicle industry. And so the whatever goes on between China and Taiwan, the real fear of them doing to Hong Kong what they did um, and doing that to, China, to Taiwan is the real concern out there, a geopolitical risk. And we've already seen tensions rise in the South China Sea. We've also seen a real shortage of container shortages um, coming out of China. They're the major producer of containers. The large containers, many of them are empty. They're not being filled. There's a real backlog in the LA ports, which is uh, adding to all of these supply chain issues. And you're starting to hear, you know, uh, manufacturers talk about just in case inventories instead of just in time inventories. And when you do that, of course, that's costly because they're trying to hedge their bets, either build up inventories or find multiple suppliers around the world so that if something happens in one part of the world, of course, they can then pick it up somewhere else. That said, pandemics are global in scope. And so the fact that we are so intricately laced within the supply chain makes it very difficult even to hedge because um, you have to there's so many pivot points and pressure points along that supply chain that you have to intervene and hedge to make sure you're getting all the parts you need to put together even one vehicle yeah and and think about it diane it's like what i what, what i see because I, I talk a lot to our colleagues in europe and in the you know the the I, anyways, the level of openness, or the level of, op of reopening economy varies from country to country, which also you know, you know, compromises or compounds the issues that we have with the supply chain that you've just kind of outlined. So um, a lot of challenges, exactly. but a lot of opportunity. And um, you know, it's, a, it's actually an exciting time to be part of the manufacturing industry because there's just so much momentum building. And I think we're at a point where, almost at an inflection point, where you're gonna start seeing a lot of advanced technology being applied to these problems. And we need to be out in front of that, both, both as a country, as a firm, and you know, to help our clients.